According to the article I'm about to read you, people with MS have one thing in their favor, which is a dramatically reduced risk of Alzheimer's disease. So I'll read you the article, make some comments about it, and show you some other scientific publications and comment on whether or not this is actually true. So this is from Washington University, a prestigious medical school in the United States. People with MS are far less likely than those without the condition to have the molecular hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease, according to new research from Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis. The discovery suggests a new avenue of research through which to seek Alzheimer's treatments, said Matthew Breyer, MD, PhD, an assistant professor of neurology and radiology, and the study's first author. In other words, if something about MS treats or prevents Alzheimer's disease, maybe some of those same changes in the immune system can be harnessed as an Alzheimer's disease treatment if we're being optimistic. Our study findings imply that some component of the biology of MS or the genetics of MS patients is protective against Alzheimer's disease. Breyer said, if we could identify what aspect is protective and apply it in a controlled way, that could inform therapeutic strategies for Alzheimer's disease. The study, an example of clinical observations directly impacting research, was published in the Annals of Neurology. I'll include the link to that study in the description below. A collaboration between WashU medicine experts in Alzheimer's disease and MS, the study was prompted by a suspicion Breyer's mentor and collaborator, Ann Cross, had developed over decades of treating patients with MS, an immune-mediated disease that attacks the central nervous system. Although her patients were living long enough to be at risk of Alzheimer's or had a family history of neurodegenerative disease, they weren't developing the disease. Now, there are a lot of things going on here. One is that people with MS, on average, have a slightly lower life expectancy compared to the general population. This seems to be decreasing over time, but even five to seven year difference in average life expectancy in people who are diagnosed with MS a long time ago, we're looking at older people, people old enough to potentially develop dementia, is significant. The risk of getting Alzheimer's disease goes up with age. The other thing is there may be some bias in who goes to see neurologists. Younger people with relapsing MS, they have a lot going on. They may have relapses. We have very good treatment for relapsing MS. But some older people, they may be stable for many years. Maybe some of them are doing well. They don't want to see neurologists anymore. Or maybe others have done so poorly and have progressed despite treatment they're not interested in seeing neurologists. They think that we can't help them, even if in some cases we actually can. The other thing that's going on is MS itself can cause cognitive symptoms, which could be confused with Alzheimer's disease or vice versa, memory loss in someone with MS could be attributed to multiple sclerosis, even if it's actually due to something else. However, from a pathological standpoint, these are really two different diseases, Alzheimer's disease and cognitive symptoms due to MS. This is looking at brain atrophy in someone with Alzheimer's disease. On the left, you see a normal brain. On the bottom slide, you see a coronal section through the brain like this. And on the right is Alzheimer's disease, you can see the sulci are greatly enlarged due to cortical atrophy, due to the death of cortical neurons in Alzheimer's disease. The occipital lobe tends to be spared, but the parietal, temporal, and frontal lobes are greatly affected. This is a brain, I presume, of someone with significant advanced Alzheimer's disease. Here you can see the hippocampi in the medial temporal lobe involved in short-term memory are very atrophic. Multiple sclerosis is totally different. This is brain atrophy in someone with MS, we're looking at an axial slice like this. Here you can see the subcortical white matter and periventricular lesions. And you can see the ventricles or fluid-filled spaces are enlarged due to loss of that subcortical tissue. But the cortical atrophy is not that severe. And if we looked at the hippocampi, not shown in this image, they wouldn't really be atrophic. This often results in different clinical symptoms. Classically, people with Alzheimer's disease early in the disease may have significant impairment of short-term memory, but everything else is okay. So you could have a conversation with someone with Alzheimer's disease. They're perfectly sharp 
fluent and intelligent and a few days later they try to have the exact same conversation with you because they don't remember it and of course this can be very impairing whereas some people with MS can have other more subtle cognitive symptoms difficulty maybe with multitasking or with processing speed due to impairment getting information to different areas of the brain due to involvement of the subcortical white matter and corpus callosum and of course symptoms very widely with many people with multiple sclerosis having no significant cognitive impairment. However, as the disease becomes more advanced, some people with multiple sclerosis who have outright dementia may be indistinguishable from people with Alzheimer's disease, so there's quite a bit of clinical overlap. We continue with the article. I noticed that I couldn't find a single MS patient of mine who had typical Alzheimer's disease said Cross, the Manny and Rosalind Rosenthal and John Trotter MS Center Chair in Neuroimmunology. If they had cognitive problems, I would send them to the memory and aging specialist here at the School of Medicine for an Alzheimer's assessment, and those doctors would always come back and tell me, no, this isn't due to Alzheimer's disease. And I have to say, anecdotally, I do have the same experience. It seems to be that not many of my older patients with MS have typical Alzheimer's disease. Cognitive impairment caused by MS can be confused with symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's can be confirmed with blood and other biological tests. Now, I have a slight disagreement with this statement. As you'll see, there are blood tests that do correlate with amyloid plaque in the central nervous system, which correlates with clinical Alzheimer's dementia, but the correlation is not as strong as you might be led to believe. To confirm Cross's observation, the research team used a new FDA-approved blood test that was developed by Washington University researchers known as Prexivity 82. The blood test is highly effective at predicting the presence of amyloid plaques in the brain. Such plaques are an indicator of Alzheimer's disease and previously only could be verified with brain scans or spinal taps. However, here is some actual data looking at the correlation between various blood tests and amyloid plaque levels based on PET scans. And you can see there is a correlation as the blood test goes up on the Y access, there's more amyloid seen on the PET scan, but the correlation is weak. And for an individual person, it probably doesn't mean that much. However, for groups of people, which is what we're looking at in this study, it may have a correlation. Breer and Cross and their colleagues recruited 100 patients with MS to take the blood test, 11 of whom also underwent PET scans at the School of Medicine's Malin Crocked Institute of Radiology. Their results were compared with the results from a control group of 300 individuals who did not have MS but were similar to those with MS in age, genetic risk for Alzheimer, and cognitive decline. By the way, the genes associated with Alzheimer's disease risk, such as APOE4, are not correlated with multiple sclerosis risk at all. We found that 50% fewer MS patients had amyloid pathology compared to their matched peers based on this blood test. So 50%, that's a pretty significant difference. Breer said, this finding supported Cross's observation that Alzheimer's disease appears to be less likely to develop among those with MS. It is not clear how amyloid accumulation is linked to cognitive impairment in typical Alzheimer's, but the accumulation of plaques is generally understood to be the first event in the biological cascade that leads to cognitive decline. The researchers also found the more typical the patient's MS history was in terms of age of onset, severity, and overall disease progression, the less likely they were to have amyloid plaque accumulation in that patient's brain compared to those with atypical presentations of MS. I'm not exactly sure how you would objectively define atypical versus typical MS. This suggests there is something about the nature of MS itself that is protective against Alzheimer's disease, which Breyer and Cross are planning to investigate. MS patients generally have multiple flare-ups of the illness over the course of their lifetimes. During these flare-ups, the immune system attacks the central nervous system, including within the brain. It's possible that this immune activity also reduces amyloid plaques, the researcher said. Now, of course, this is just 
pure speculation, but it is possible that activation of the immune system could have benefits in preventing other diseases. A lot of the anti-amyloid monoclonal antibodies being developed to treat Alzheimer's disease induce an immune response. Maybe people with MS have a more natural, effective immune response against accumulation of abnormal pathologic proteins. Perhaps when the Alzheimer's disease amyloid pathology was developing, the patients with MS had some degree of inflammation in their brains that was spurred by their immune responses, Breyer said, referring to work by co-author David M. Holtzman, the Barbara Burton and Reuben M. Morris III Distinguished Professor of Neurology. Breyer noted that activated microglia, which are part of the brain's immune response in MS, have been shown to clear amyloid from the brain in animal models. Breyer and Cross have begun the next steps of this research, both to tease out possible human genetics involved, as well as to test amyloid plaque development in amyloid models representing MS. And for this last paragraph, I give them huge credit. Several of Breyer's and Cross's co-authors on the study are affiliated with C2N Diagnostics. This is the diagnostic test for Alzheimer's disease mentioned in the study, a Washington University startup that provided support for the investigation, the Precivity 82 test is based on technology licensed to C2N by the university, so they're stating their conflict of interest clearly and unambiguously. Okay, but if this is actually true, if this is a real phenomenon, we should just be able to look at people with MS and see that they have a lower rate of Alzheimer's disease. Well, this is one study on the topic. This is a cross-sectional study from a data broker Optum in the United States, and they found the risk of Alzheimer's disease in the age group 45 to 64, which is younger people who shouldn't have much Alzheimer's disease, was actually much, much higher in people with multiple sclerosis, 1.4% in people with MS versus only 0.2% in those without MS. For people who were a little bit older, it was more similar. Looking at the age 65 plus category, about 4% of people with MS had Alzheimer's disease versus 3.3% without. So in this study, there was no benefit to having multiple sclerosis and reducing the risk of Alzheimer's disease. In fact, it was increased. This is a study from Korea, which has the same finding. It compares people with MS versus people without MS. And in the second to the last column is the incidence rate of any dementia, Alzheimer's dementia, or vascular dementia on the bottom. And if you look at any dementia, the incidence was around 17. This is per 1,000 person year. So relatively low rates of dementia, but only 7.36. So over twofold more dementia in people with MS. For Alzheimer's dementia specifically, it was the same 13.2 versus 6, roughly double the risk of Alzheimer's dementia in people with MS. And even for vascular dementia, it was actually almost a fourfold increased risk. So it doesn't seem like MS prevents Alzheimer's disease in these observational studies. But I'll just say very directly, I really don't have confidence in any of these studies because even if you document something and publish it in a clinical journal, it doesn't mean it's really true. And I simply have no confidence in doctors ability to say for sure what the exact cause of someone's cognitive impairment is. For instance, let's say someone with multiple sclerosis has cognitive impairment. They're assessed by someone who diagnoses them with dementia. How would they know for sure that they have vascular dementia if their MRI scan shows significant demyelinating lesions? The clinical syndromes of dementia are very similar. It seems like nonsense to me. And so it may be that people with MRI simply have more cognitive symptoms overall, and they get diagnosed with various types of dementia, often spuriously, because often it could be a symptom of multiple sclerosis. I think Anne Cross may be onto something. It does seem to me that Alzheimer's disease is quite rare in people with multiple sclerosis, though I admit if I have a 75-year-old patient with multiple sclerosis and cognitive impairment, it's very difficult for me to say for sure they don't have both MS 
and Alzheimer's disease. Certainly, I have had some patients who have both, and they clearly have a clinical syndrome typical of Alzheimer's disease, but I would say it's very, very rare. I really wouldn't believe that it's 4% of people with multiple sclerosis over age 65. It seems to be less than that. I don't really know that there are clinical implications of this. It seems it's a little far-fetched that we would use this information to come up with a treatment for Alzheimer's disease, but it's interesting nonetheless. I'd be interested to know if you are older with MS, have cognitive symptoms, have you been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, and how do you know that you have that and not just symptoms of MS? And let me know if you have ideas for other videos.